Whoever said that good coaching didn't make a difference, well, they didn't see Iowa State play last season because after Matt Campbell's first season two years ago, in which they went 3-9, and nine, Campbell turned ISU football around. Eight wins, only five losses, and a couple of those wins against the best two teams in the Big 12, my Sooners and TCU. So entering this season, Campbell's got pieces on both sides of the ball to perhaps be just as good, if not better, than what we saw in 2017. Remember, Iowa State won eight games, but they could have won even more than that. They had some heartbreaking losses, including losing on the final play of the game at Kansas State. Their five losses were by an average of five points. So Iowa State, much more competitive last season. Big reason why was they had consistency at quarterback. Kyle Kemp, he's back, and he got a sixth year of eligibility, so you get to enjoy him uh, one more year. Kemp, um, 15 touchdowns, but only three picks, 66% completion percentage. Remember, um, last year entering the Oklahoma game, we thought it was going to be Jacob Park who would be the starting quarterback, but Kemp did not make the trip, and it turned out to be a blessing in disguise for ISU as Kemp led Iowa State to the upset win over my Sooners. And, there's, there's no question that Kemp played a big role in that, as did David Montgomery, the running back, in a year in which the Cyclones did not run the ball very well as a team, second to last in the conference, only averaging 100, 113 yards per game. David Montgomery, he did shine with close to 1,150 yards rushing and 11 touchdowns. Biggest attribute he has, he is very difficult to tackle. Um, if you try to get him upper body, Forget it, you're not going to be able to do it. A very strong, durable, reliable running back. That's David Montgomery back for his junior year. Iowa State, though, will be hurting a little bit at receiver, losing not just their top guy, but their number three guy as well. Their top guy these past few years has been Alan Lazard. Um, all Big 12 last season had over 70 catches. He's gone along with the number three guy. Uh, that is uh, Marchi Murdoch. So now the number two guy, Hakeem Butler, steps in. A tall receiver at 6 feet, 6 inches tall, had 17 yards per catch and 7 touchdowns last year. And Matt Eaton on the other side, 6 feet, 4 inches tall. You also return a guy that could be all Big 12 this year at tight end and Chase Allen. And a guy that could very well be all Big 12 at center in Julian Good-Jones. And the Cyclones also return the right tackle in Bryce Meeker. So there's dependability on the offensive line. But let's see if that ground game uh, can increase what they got last year, which, again, team-wise was not very good. Defensively, boy, was Iowa State very good on this side of the ball. Number two in scoring defense, only giving up 20.9 points per game. You know, if, if you're looking at Iowa State as a unit, yes, they did give up their fair share of yardage. But... One of the big differences between them and other teams who give up a lot of yardage, the Cyclones didn't give up very many points. It was the ultimate bend but don't break type defense, and they get six starters back from it. Uh, one of those guys, though, will not be Joe Lanning, who was their team leader who could play both sides of the ball. Last year had 114 tackles, so now Iowa State has to move on um, with him not being there anymore. So other linebackers that could make a big difference, um, you have Marcel Spears, the other Cyclone linebacker who had triple digits and tackles, had 107 and had eight and a half tackles for loss. You also bring in the Leo position, Jaquan Bailey, and you also have Willie Harvey. So they're still going to be stout at linebacker. As far as the defensive line goes, uh, Ray Lima comes back at the uh, nose guard position. The corners, lots of experience there for ISU. 54 combined starts for Brian Peavy, one of the better corners in the Big 12, 88 tackles a year ago, and R. Andre Payne at the other side. And at safety, getting a late season start in the Liberty Bowl at that time, freshman Lawrence White. Now you will have him um, as the starter at, at one of the safety positions entering his sophomore season. Like I said, the big thing for Iowa State, you know, for them, the thing is bending a little bit. That's one thing, but not breaking and not giving up a lot of points. That was their philosophy last year. By the way, that plus 10 turnover margin, it was uh, one of the best in the country, 16th in the nation in turnover margin. Looking at the schedule for Iowa State, those first seven games, five of them they're going to be underdogs in. So it's a very rough start for the Iowa State season as far as that schedule, including the second game for the Cyhawk Trophy. Last season, it was Iowa winning this game in overtime. Of course, the next game, mid-September against my Sooners, and even two years ago, Oklahoma had a tough time trying to win at Ames before pulling it out late. Of course, we know what happened last year in Norman. 
Then look at late September, early October, a couple of very difficult back-to-back -back road games with TCU in Fort Worth and in Stillwater against those Cowboys. The next week, you're facing one of the uh, conference favorites in West Virginia, but you get them at home. Then you finally get the bye week. And of those final five games, I think four of them should spell wins for Iowa State. You get three of them at home. The toughest of the bunch looks like the game at Texas on November 17th. For Iowa State, yes, Matt Campbell should get these guys to another bowl game, but that schedule to start the season, to me, looks a little too rough. I do think Iowa State, though, will have another winning record, but I've got them finishing sixth in the Big 12. That's my look at ISU. See you next time.